the Willow Creek Telegraph. <laughs> the guests need to be kept up to date with what the murderer is up to. This is information about all the attractions Willow Creek has to offer. The Murder Museum. The crime scene route including a flying visit to the pub and a group photo in front of the castle. <laughs> I don't really want to know anymore. Back there is just a little sitting area. Two armchairs, a table, a shelf with books. Boring. The room looks almost exactly the same as the other one I had three weeks ago. I bet Murray got a discount on the interior decoration. The only thing I brought with me from Boston is a jacket, and I keep that on day and night. This thing is completely useless to me. A couple of standard pictures from a catalog uh, hanging on the otherwise bare wall. An antiquated thing for antiquated backsides. There's only atmospheric noise. You probably have to pay extra to get TV channels. They've covered up the ugly gray carpet with an even uglier beige carpet. Great idea. Lifted clean off its hinges. They were probably broken. Murray, my favorite hotelier. where that path leads. Before I get myself lost in the woods, I'd rather stay on the road. That's actually a no parking sign, but I guess in this context it means stay out. A locked gate made of rotten planks. The barbed wire and the sign are nailed to the gate. That means you can open or close it from the other side without touching the barbed wire. The spiral staircase is completely decayed. The lighthouse hasn't been used for ages. An old, abandoned lighthouse. It must have collapsed many years ago. Oh, I found Miss Valley's corpse here. Yes, right here. But there's no evidence of the crime to be seen. Next spring, lovers will be back here. Looking out at the sea. Arm and arm. Fine English cliffs. Gray and steep. Perfect for bringing your life to an end. The North Sea. This is where England stops. Aimlessly wander through the woods? Uh, no thanks. The last time I did that, I got arrested for arson and murder. There's barbed wire attached to the wooden gate. Someone's got... All the warnings, the barbed wire? That has to make this path incredibly interesting. I'd really like to know what's behind all that. Uh, uh, no. I don't... 
A rucksack with a contorted image of my father's face on it. I'm not sure Murray's actually allowed to sell crap like this. Whatever. I'll sue him for that later. First of all, let's see what's inside. <laughs> That well, village is a little bit of an exaggeration. I don't want to walk there, though. Well, I have no reason. A busted signpost. You can hardly make out. Dead branches on a dead tree. Looking at that makes you feel much more alive. Spectacular backdrop, huh? But as I'm already here, I ought to look in on Lady Victoria and ask how she's doing. An empty letterbox. Oh, you've got a new doorbell with an intercom system. Who's there? My name's Dare, uh, Adrian Gordon. I'd like to see Lady Victoria, please. Hello? Come in, Mr. Lord. Lady Victoria has just broken up. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Please excuse the case. The builders are working on the renovations. You're looking after Lady Victoria? Yes. I'm a trained nurse of your... Great-grandmother. I take care of all of your great grandmother's needs. Thank you, Miss... Angeline. Sister Angeline. Thank you, Sister Angeline. Can I just ask you something? Do you think that being in the middle of a construction site is the right place for such an old lady? Lady Victoria was most insistent that she be moved back into the castle. She said that she'd been born here and that she wanted to die here. And the walls here are rather thick. She doesn't hear that much. At least she hasn't complained as of yet. How is Lady Victoria? As well as can be expected. She's not speaking to me, unfortunately. Perhaps you'll have better luck. God, it looks like a death chamber in here. Oh, I can feel a chill right to my heart. I can only hope Victoria gets better soon. A small casket. Victoria probably keeps her jewelry in it. Hairbrushes, makeup utensils, creams, Victoria's cosmetic stuff. A small casket. A shelf with books. Souvenirs and caskets on it. Huh. Probably full of memories. A plush stool. Like lots of things in this room, it's red. A bit of a deja vu moment. About four weeks ago, I was standing at my foster mom's sickbed. These machines were there, too. There's even a button to call the nurse here as well. Victoria, my great-grandmother... And the only member of my family I've got left. Hello, Victoria? It's me, Adrian. Did you put up the bail for me? Are you being well looked after? Victoria, are you okay? Victoria, I need your help. Really. The police don't believe me. How, how can I make them understand that I'm Adrian Gordon when the name Darren Michaels is printed in my passport? Victoria, you're the only one who can help me. 
Please. I'm sorry about what happened to Bates, Eleanor, and Sally. It must be awful for you. Adrian, tell me the truth. Was it you? Did you start the fire? No, Victoria. It wasn't me. It was Lewis. He did what Angelina told him to do. She was behind all the murders. It was her who also lured me here because she needed me for, you know, the curse which only affects the male Gordons. She wanted to achieve what Samuel was trying to prevent. She was possessed by it. She lied to me, to all of us. What's all that, Adrian? You sound like a coward. It wasn't me. It was Angelina. Why should I believe you? Why have you come here at all? Things were going well for you in America. If you'd only just stayed there, Bates would still be alive. Eleanor, Catherine, Miss Valley. You're too weak. You can't stand up to Mordred. His ghost rides you like a child rides a rocking horse. Since you've turned up, there's been nothing but calamity. Just disappear again, Adrian. Do me a favor and go back to where you came from before the other half of the castle goes up in flames. N nothing at all. I I've been talking with her, that's all. You'd better go now. Your great-grandmother needs peace and quiet. Yes, uh, I I'm sorry. I didn't want that. I'm, I'm sorry. Just go, please. <laughs> now, it's not just everyone in the village that hates me. The only remaining member of my family, too. Real good job, Darren. I wasn't already doing it. i signing up for therapy right away. Oh well, here goes nothing. Esteemed Mr. Michaels, what's on your mind? Do you know the inspector, Mr. Spooner? Oh yes, I certainly do. He was here twice. Took half the hotel apart. A terribly inconsiderate fellow. But good for business, too. But how often, as a tourist, do you have the chance to see this kind of an investigation firsthand? Unfortunately, he confiscated all of your and Miss Angelina's personal effects. Means I can only display replicas in the museum. Huh. <laughs> what bad luck. So, anything exciting happen? You mean, apart from Miss Valley's murder and the castle burning down and three people losing their lives? Hmm. Well, the fair's finished. In its place, we now have a new exhibition in the Willow Creek Museum of Modern Murder. It's opening in a few days. Oh, you should definitely see that. It's worth it. Oh, yeah. For you, most definitely. The woods around Willow Creek are pretty gloomy. The woods are quite exceptional, I'll have you know. 
mountain full of ghosts and demons, if you like to believe the local folklore. The perfect backdrop for all of the grisly murders that have happened here and are, regrettably, yet to come. You can hardly wait, right? I've lived here long enough to know that patience is a virtue. Why don't you go out and kill a few people yourself if you're so hot on it all? I'm a businessman, not a murderer. A small but absolutely fine distinction, Mr. Michaels. But you know I had nothing to do with the fire, don't you? Yes, well, according to the papers... Yeah, the British tabloid press is world-renowned for its believability. Well, of course they don't always have the whole truth in there, but the headlines do help me to keep the hotel going. In this case, at my expense. So there, you've got your stupid photo. Happy? Oh. I can hardly recognize a thing. Me in front of the castle, as agreed? Okay, off to the cops, Murray. I'm sure you know how important my exonerating statement in the Valley murder case is. Murray... Okay, okay, I'll take it. First, go to the police station. All right, then I'll go today. I'm an honorable businessman. And I'm a possessed madman. I suggest taking a rest in your room first, and then when you wake up, everything will have been sorted with the police. <sighs> I really could use some sleep. While I'm here, I may as well put away the stuff I don't want to carry around with me. Huh. Someone shoved something under the door. I can help you prove your innocence because I believe in your innocence. But I have to be able to trust you too. We can't meet yet, which is why I'm just gonna send you clues. If you want to take up my offer, then you'll find the first lead at your father's grave. Huh. That's a bit confusing. Who's this message from? Murray? He doesn't have an interest in proving my innocence. And anyway, he would just tell me himself. But who else knows I'm living here in the hotel? I need to follow this up carefully. And I ought to find out where the graveyard is around here. Hi, Murray. Oh, the esteemed Mr. Michaels. What's on your mind? Murray, do you know where the local graveyard is? A graveyard? Didn't you want to take a rest? I'm not up for resting anymore. I'm sure you can't mean the graveyard behind the hotel. It's being redone right now. It's being what? I've had it removed for the time being, so I can relocate it in a sensational new setting. It means I can charge more for some of the rooms with views over the Gordon Graveyard. You've had the Gordon family graves leveled? To be quite honest, there was only Lothar Gordon's grave there, the founder of the original sanatorium. The family crypt is in the churchyard at Warm Hill. Ah, oh, right. In Warm Hill, then. Is this note here from you? Pardon? No. I speak to my guests personally when I've got something for them. Was there anyone here asking for me earlier? No. You're simply not well known enough. But that'll soon change, believe me. See you, Murray. Back to work. doesn't seem to be in. There's a poster hanging here.
why should I go into the middle of the woods? Who's that? That doesn't look like the priest. A huge stained glass window for optimum illumination. Bare wooden pews, very inviting. <laughs> they really make you want to kneel down and pray. Hey, you there. Good morning. What the? Oh, I'm sorry, lad. I must have nodded off. In the confession box? The bench has a cushion in it, at least. You're not the priest, are you? God forbid. I'm Mark, the grave digger. Do you know Warmhill well? Of course, but it's just a few houses on the back of the woods. There's more life in here, I tell you. Are you looking for something in particular? No, I'm just trying to get an idea of the place. Uh, looking around this graveyard would give you a better idea of the place. And should you want to reserve yourself a spot here, then let me know. I recommend the southern slope, that's the best location. Thanks for the tip, but uh, I'm in no hurry to die just yet. But maybe it's in a hurry to come and get you. <laughs> What is it you actually do all day? <sighs> Answer stupid questions. I mean, digging graves can't be all you do. Yeah, you're right, lad. I don't just dig. I repair things too, keep the church in order, guard the graves. And if you think that the weeds grow on their own right here, then think again. It ain't weeds, and it don't grow on its own. But who's interested anyway? What did you mean by that? You guard the graves. Well, because of the clientele. So they don't get dug up. By dogs and the like. Which dogs? Well, strays from around here. For them, a graveyard is like a... Uh, an underground hot dog stand? Yeah, exactly. With bloody tough sausages. <laughs> You must have a lot to do around here, being the grave digger. Oh, that's right. My job here is uh, quite secure. Can you tell me anything about the church? What do you mean then, lad? Who built it? It certainly wasn't me, even if I might look that old. Must have been around the time Marcus Gordon was alive. Have you seen the dark part of the tower up there? Yes. He ran out of stone, and they say he took stones from his castle walls to finish it off. Demolished his own castle to finish the church. A model Christian. Perhaps his time was running out. Got himself buried in there in the end. A crypt that's a hundred feet tall with an altar and a bell tower, all for him alone. <laughs> what a modest man. All those toffs are. <laughs> no, no, he treated himself to an extra crypt underneath the nave. But it caved in 12 years ago. Nobody can get in there anymore. It's quite a woody area. That's also supposed to be the reason it's such a bloody area. The evil of the woods? <laughs> People around here read too many horror stories. Oh, have experienced it themselves. Have you been in the woods here at night? No. They say there's plenty to see. Murderous lords of the castle. The undead. Modred's voracious hellhounds. There are many stories about it. Probably as many stories as there are people here. Hmm. 
The woods around Willow Creek strike me as being particularly creepy. Yes, and the number of wild boars in there is uncanny. I've known them to trample down my fences to get at the clientele. But I've got some crafty traps set up. I'm looking forward to having a roast. The priest gave his permission. You don't happen to know, being the gravedigger and all, where Samuel Gordon's grave is? He must have been buried in 1981. Mm, that's a tough one, lad. So many people died here 12 years ago, good and evil alike, in the strangest of circumstances. I really can't remember who ended up where. You'd be better off talking to Father Frederick, the priest. Perhaps he can remember. Where would I find the priest, then? Today? Well, you won't find him at all. He left around midday. Some conference or other. Supposed to be back by noon tomorrow. I'd better be going. Keep your eyes peeled, lad. Is it that late already? 